the number one Eastern team hopes to stay atop the conference. It's wheeling and dealing as the trade deadline passes. With less than a month left in the regular season, intensity is in every game. And right now on ECHL Week. Welcome to another edition of ECHL Week, coming to you this time from the very crowded U.S. Bank Arena in Cincinnati, Ohio, home of the Cincinnati Cyclones. First in the Eastern Conference to reach 80 points, the Manchester Monarchs are shining in their debut ECHL season. With rookie coach Rich Seeley pushing the right buttons, fans of the New Hampshire team have been treated to a first place club for most of the season's second half on the strength of a 10-game point streak through most of January. We spoke with Seeley about his first year behind the Monarchs bench, one player who's made a difference for the team, and Manchester's playoff potential. No, it's fun. It, it, it's, it is a lot of work. Yeah, you're wearing a lot of different hats for sure, but um, you know, it, part of that, our success, our staff, uh, a big part of that. Um, we're you know, fortunate if we had, a, we had really nice facilities to work with and, uh, and, a, and a winning tradition, um, and, and we, we, we established a nice staff uh, here in Manchester that, uh, you know, that brings an expectation of hard work uh, from the guys and from themselves individually, and um, so far so good. You know, there's a lot of guys that I think have had put together uh, um, some some solid seasons thus far. Um, you know, surprisingly enough, a guy like Matt McKenzie doesn't get a lot uh, of credit. He's kind of one of those guys that, you know, when, when we, we evaluate players on our team, you're saying, oh, wow, well, you know, guy had a great game tonight. And, you know, you, you see you go see a lot of players go through some ups and downs. And one guy I'll give some credit for is, is Matt McKenzie. He's a guy that's been pretty steady throughout this whole year for us. And we haven't come back after a game and said, you know, Matt, was, was he was off tonight. You know what I mean? We've had some games where he thought he was great. and, and But uh, always when we come back, a few guys, uh, we've come back, Matt, one of them, saying, you know what, he's been pretty steady again, again, uh, night in and night out. So i got to give him credit there. I feel we have a good foundation. We've got a ways to go. I mean, I can't, you know, we're having some success. Yes, but um, as we've talked about a couple times before, this is a, a, a it's a marathon, not a sprint. I, I think there is there is a potential for for us to to be good, um, and I think like anything, you, you know, sometimes some chips gotta fall in, in your favor. But there's a there's a makeup here of some guys that are in this room that that I think we we can do some good things. But that being said, that can go out the door pretty quickly if you're not willing to work. The Indy Fuel has relieved head coach Scott Hillman of his duties and named Bernie John as interim head coach for the rest of the season. John has been an assistant coach with the Fuel since it started play in October of 2014. He spent 10 seasons as a minor league defenseman. We are looking ahead with this move, said Indy Fuel chairman Jim Hallett. Bernie John has been a part of this organization from the beginning, and as we begin the search for a full-time head coach, his name will certainly be on that list. We want to provide an immediate spark for the team for the remaining 13 games. Hillman had been the Fuel's only coach for its first two seasons. His final record with Indy was 58, 60, 6, and 7. On the night when Kalamazoo remembered those killed during last month's tragic shooting in that community, Dane Fox helped make the evening memorable from a hockey standpoint. The Wings forward became the third player to score four times in a game this season. He scored Kalamazoo's last four goals in a 5-4 overtime win against Utah. Two days later, Fox was traded from the Vancouver Canucks to the Carolina Hurricanes. His next stop is AHL Charlotte. Fox scored 95 points in 123 ECHL games. Speaking of trades, Thursday was the deadline for this season. 15 players changed teams in 10 deals leading up to the deadline. Among the highlights were Reading sending its leading scorer, Robbie Zarnick, to Norfolk for veteran center Michael Pellick. Also, former ECHL All-Star Danny Gauthier was sent to Norfolk. Hi, this is Bryce Anawasi with the Missouri Mavericks, and you're watching ECHL Week. The future of the Brampton Beast is more secure after the Brampton City Council approved a sponsorship and advertising agreement which will give the team $1.5 million over the next three years. The city will also examine the possibility of purchasing the Beast's home arena, the Powerade Center. Beast President and GM Carrie Kaplan said that the partnership with the city, quote, also allows us to work with the city to offer many less fortunate families and children a chance at an unforgettable night out, most of whom would otherwise not have the opportunity. If you're in one of six ECHL markets, you'll have the opportunity to see the Kelly Cup, the league's championship trophy, over the next month. The Cup will make appearances at games, businesses, community functions, schools, and media outlets as it travels nearly 3,300 miles during its six-week junket. 
with the exception of Worcester, which won't begin play until October of 2017, all the other cities on the tour will be hoping that the Cup makes a return visit in June after the Kelly Cup playoffs have determined the league's 28th postseason champion. Highlight games from the Eastern and Western Conferences are straight ahead on ECHL Week. Don't miss a minute of ECHL action. Subscribe now to ECHL.TV. Take advantage of live streaming on your phone, tablet, or computer, and never miss out on the action, no matter where you are. Catch every game from around the league. Relive your favorite team's great moments and big plays with full game replays and video on demand. Visit ECHL.TV now to sign up. If it's on, it's on ECHL.TV. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Micro Patrick of your Adirondack Thunder, and you can tweet me at at the Real Turks Ten. Well, the the affiliation agreements with each team, it, it's you know, some would fit perfect in maps and everything else, but it's more of a um, a relationship that they have built with with their ECHL team um, and the ECHL team going and getting an affiliation with their their NHL team. So um, there's some teams that are close by and everything else that uh, you would think that they would be a good fit, but it, it has to do with with how the NHL team wants to have their their ECHL affiliate and and maybe it's who's coaching and and everything else. So just because the team is, is, is close proximity doesn't mean that it's a good fit um, for, for each team. There, there's an affiliation agreement um, with, with from the ECHL to the uh, to the NHL team. There is an affiliation agreement, um, and, and there's certain things that maybe the ECHL team will, will pay for as far as uh, with the players. Uh, some are better than others as far as the, the agreements, but it's uh, it's an individual agreement. We we set out. Kind of the parameters and stuff, but uh, it also has to do with uh, with how your relationship is with uh, with that NHL team and and the American Hockey League team as well. Hi, this is Michael Saint Croix of the Greenville Swamp Rabbits, and you're watching ECHL Week. Time once again for a look at our highlight games of the week. To Arnold, back out to Sauve. Now Boyvin with it just inside the line, left side to Arnold. Right side, Boyvin in the circle. Boyvin's redirected shot, score! Zach Laraza redirected it by Massa. It's an expressive delivery, power play goal. Center ice, Joey Diamond with it over the line, right side. Diamond moving in, Diamond in the slot. Diamond holds it, shot, score! Lock wins the draw, shot by Rollick, a save. Loose puck out of front, score! As Carr could not control it out after the initial shot by Rollick. Andrews out there for the Monarchs and Doug Carr. Shot from the right wing circle, pass in front, shot, score! That took eight seconds and Orlando has tied it up. Lindbergh with it. Left-handed shot, takes it wide to the right. Lindbergh moving in, fakes backhander and a score! Can he tie it? Anthoin on the forehand, moving in, his shot saved by Massa. And the Solar Bears win this one three to two. Mark 
pulls up and waits for help. Took a hit from behind from Martel. Play continues. A good play by Basarama. Now over the Idaho blue line. This is Traversa. Top of the left circle. A shot saved made by DeRose. He gets to it. Got around a check from Ewan. Pass to the front for Traversa. He carried it behind the net and wrapped it around. Two jam attempts on the far side were kept out by DeRose. As the hitting picks up here in the second period. And now a penalty upcoming on Jake Rutt. And play stops as Jake Rutt took two shots at Traversa, knocked him to the ice twice. Into the Idaho zone, dropped it back, high slapper Breton. Across for Seaback and a save made by DeRosier. Left wing boards into Alaska ice. Tried a sharp angle shot and fanned on it. Got the centering pass in front, a save, the rebound, score! Rob Winsmeyer cleans up at the side of the net. And early in the third period, the scoreless tie is broken. The Steelheads have a 1-0 lead. Steelheads in their own zone, trying to clear to the blue line. Couldn't do it. Sivak's shot was blocked. Now the Steelheads will come out to center. Welcome back our KTIK audience. Here's Basarabu with speed. A backhander, he scores! Wow! Joe Basarabu down the left wing boards with the backhander through to Saris. 2-0 Steelheads. Neutral ice with 3.10 to go in the third period. The Steelheads have a 2-0 lead. Top of the left circle, Sivak fires and scores. And Philip DeRosier now undefeated in his last nine Steelhead starts, 7-0 and two. And the Steelheads get another two big points over the Alaska Aces. That's it for another edition of ECHL Week. Twister and I say goodbye, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>